I kind of want to dive into uh, car culture now. Um, I haven't done any podcasts on car stuff, being that cars, I mean, if you guys know me, if, if you know me personally, cars are a big part of my life, huge part of my life. Um, basically, uh, I, I have touched on, I think, like how I got into cars. I'll, li- I'll touch into it again real quick, but parents are divorced. My stepfather is big into racing cars, um, drag racing. I've been working on cars with him. I was lucky literally to dive into working on engines at like 12 years old, you know? holding pistons and valve springs and stuff like that stuff and putting stuff together something 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 that young usually doesn't get to experience it's just cool in my opinion and that's kind of what got me into cars was him uh, i thought it was super cool i race for a little bit with him he does drag racing um like bracket racing uh he travels pretty much all over the east coast for the most part all year long and um not all year long but all season long which is basically from like i want to say it's basically from how when does it start? Maybe like April through all of summer into like maybe late October, early November, and then he wraps up the season, and then um that's that. But um he's the one who got me into cars. If it wasn't for that, um I probably would never be into cars. Like my dad's into motorcycles, and um I was into motorcycles at a point in my life. Still love motorcycles. I owned an R6 for a while. I love riding. It's not in the state of New Jersey. Way too many times that I probably shouldn't even be alive right now is why I sold my bike. Um, I love riding motorcycles. I think I will own motorcycles again at some point in my life. I just don't think in the state of New Jersey where I live. Uh, it is just a nightmare to drive motorcycles up here. You're just literally asking to get hit or, you know, die. I know way too many people and it was just not worth it for me as much as I love to ride. I took a break, sold my bike this year and haven't rode since. But anyways, back to the car thing. If it wasn't for like my parents being divorced and stuff, I would have never got into cars because my dad wasn't really into cars. My dad was into bikes and I got into cars through him. And basically, that led to me getting into racing with him. I raced for a couple of years. Um, it's so much fun. I loved it. Um, I love everything about it. It's just doing that type of racing, it is a lot of money. It is a big financial investment. Um, and being young and stuff and wanting to, you know, basically, I, I don't know. Like, it's, I, I wanted to just kind of, rather, I'd rather save the money than always spending that money, spending that money. Because it's expensive. It's so expensive. To go, I mean, and it, he would fill out, I'd tell you the same thing. I got to have him on, on here and we'll just do like a whole podcast of just drag racing because I know he'll love that. I know you're watching this, Lenny. So we'll do that one day and uh, we'll let him talk about all that stuff because that's, that's his whole life. He's been racing cars since, since he's fucking probably 16 years old, 15 years old, younger than that. Anyways, so basically I raced and then, you know, I took a break and I kind of got into like the street car scene. I always liked Volkswagens, Audis, BMWs, you know, all that stuff. I've always been like the European kid. I've always owned european cars um i think as soon as i graduated high school i was 17 years old saved up a bunch of money graduation money and i bought uh my first mark four it was an 05 gli 04 because 05 was last year i bought a gli um and that's basically what started off for myself working on my own stuff um i bought that bone stock it was like a super super clean uh gli let me pull up uh some pictures for you guys i'll just pull up instagram on the computer uh, let me see what I can find here. I'm gonna have to go back a little bit because that was years ago. But um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me find my GLI. We'll go through like the uh, we'll go through like the time time frame of it. I'll show you it in like the prime. Let's see. This was this was close to around the time I sold this thing. Let's see here. Um, open up capture again. All right, so this is my Mark IV GLI right here. Uh, this thing I sold and like instantly regretted this so much. Um, but this is the first car that I built. I mean, I know I know how the car scene is. You didn't build it by putting bags and wheels and stance and stance in it out and everything. I get people are gonna say that I didn't build the motor or anything. I had ba- bare bones like mods onto the motor. I had exhaust. I had intake, and that was basically it. It was just you know I was more into going to car shows, chilling. I built the car that way. Built like I said. But that was the GLI all done up. Let me see if I can find a picture of it uh, um, in, like, stages of it. I don't know. Um, like, it basically, all right, I'm just going to show pictures of, like, in the prime. This is, like, what it was. This is what I did with it and everything. That was basically, like, the finished result when I sold it. I sold the wheels, took everything basically off it beside the bags, and pretty much of that nature. But anyways, um, with that being said, um, that was the first car that basically got me hooked into cars. Um, I had that for maybe like three to four ish years. I think I took that thing from literally bone stock. It was straight from looked like it came straight from the factory. Like nothing was done to it, and uh, basically took it to the pictures you just seen there. 
sold that car really really regretted it like it hit hard after like two months it's like you get like an you literally like a car guy to car guy you get like emotionally attached to these things like you put so much time into these cars and and money and you know working your ass off to, to pick up the parts and stuff that you want for it and uh once you like sell it like i don't know i came to a point where i wasn't driving the car as much i wasn't using it as much and this comes down to what i was talking about how I, in the beginning like honestly the car scene in my opinion right now is just it's literally it's dog water it's it's crap like everybody's building the same things everybody does the same things to these cars car meets are getting shut down all the time because kids just act like complete idiots at these things and it's just like it's not even fun to go to like these meets anymore like growing up when i was like that like and it's weird because this is only over the last like four to five years i feel like this has happened like you would go to we would, there would be so many local car meets so many local car meets tons of them and i'd be at every single one me and like you know 15 of my friends we were everybody was into cars every single person that i was friends with at right out of high school owned cars and they were nice cars like luckily for me none of my friend groups did like you know the cheesy cheap stuff to the cars with the cheap wheels and doing this and the cheap parts like all my friends like luckily did their stuff right in my opinion like and you'll get what i'm saying if you're a serious car guy like and i mean no disrespect that anybody's like in the car scene and like i feel like you feel like i'm coming at them but like there's just the fact is like these people some of these builds and stuff that people are calling builds and like this and that are just like they're, they're ebay builds ebay parts from here the cheapest parts you know knockoff stuff and it's just like it's so corny to see because everybody's buying the same wheels the same parts the same this the same that the same cars and building the same things i'm not saying i have the coolest car ever right now i'm not saying i'm like the, the, the coolest hardest guy in the car scene but like i'm more into like people taking stuff that's not as popular like like i'll show you my car now that i have i own a uh e36 bmw it's a 99 um, not saying it's the most popular car in the world or not the most popular car in the world, but like, it's something that you don't see as much. Um, this is it. You know, it's something you don't see as much. It's something that it's, it's old. It's hard to come by. It's like, it's more rare and it's more like, it's just, in my opinion, this is cool. This is more or less what like the car scene should be about. It's not about going to buy in a 2020, 2021 Honda Civic SI and slam it to the same, on the same uh, coilovers and the same exact wheels and, and calling a day. Like, it's just kind of, that's just not my thing. And I feel like, like that's so much of what the car culture is. Uh, this is literally it. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the car. This is uh, pretty simply my pride and joy. I love this thing. Um, as far as like, as far as parts and stuff go, like, let me see, uh, one sec, let me just switch back while I scroll through the Instagram real quick and see, like, other stuff that's in it, um, like, this is a cool picture, it's a convertible hardtop as well, another kind of, it's a, for an E36, if you're familiar, it's kind of hard to get a hardtop for these things, like, the hardtops alone sell for upwards of 1500 to, like, two grand for a hard, a good hardtop, like, and good luck finding one, they're so hard. Like you can't get them aftermarket. They only came from the dealer from this year for like five years from them. I, I to be honest, some of my other friends might know a little bit more about like the you know I, I know enough, but I don't know like details of like when certain parts and this and that came out for these cars. Other people would be better in that aspect as me. But um, this is basically it. Um, I think this is another dope picture from H two O, which I'll dive into H two O at some point. But uh, basically, like a rundown of the car. Um, it's got it's uh. 328i or 320 323i uh everything stock m52 motor it's got a cat back exhaust on it uh fancy wide rear diffuser i ended up getting um recaro seats from it there are as far as i know i'm not 100 sure there are definitely some rare seats they're from japan uh well they came out of stuff in japan i don't know i, I couldn't find i tried to track the history they're the sr2 model um seats and they came out of a lot of early 90s stuff as far as i'm concerned the pattern that i have is kind of like no one has ever seen it. like they have the confettis that are super popular um but like as far as like let me see if i can let me see if i could find the seats uh the seats are super super dope like i, I love these seats of course i don't have a picture of them on here um like i don't have a picture of them on here i'm sorry guys like for me to do it live right now i'm the this thing i can't really pull anything up so whatever but um they're sr they're sr3s uh the model seat and uh is that even right I, I feel like an idiot right now talking about this i don't even know what seats i have that's sick let me see if i can find it i'm dumb <laughs> um let's see 
look this up real quick. Um, car, I'm pretty sure they're SR3s. I don't know why I'm having like a major brain fart right now. Like I don't know what I have in my car, but it is what it is. Yeah, SR3s. That's like the model of the seat. But the pattern I have, I don't even know what it is, to be honest. It's a dope pattern. It's that cool 90s look. They're not the confettis. And I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to somebody that imports these things in from Japan, and he's never seen the pattern. So I have no idea what they came out of. Um, they are super dope, though. Like, this is what I mean as far as, like, the car scene and stuff. It's like everybody does the same thing. Me, like, and a lot of other people, like, especially with, like these older BMWs and stuff, like, we try to get the cool, rare parts that you don't see and, like, more expensive stuff that you don't see just to have it on the car you know it is dumb it deserves no purpose it's for looks but it's like kind of cool to say hey i have this rare part you know things like that you know you don't see those seats every day in in, in these cars or in any cars really and that's what kind of makes it cool as far as like the car scene now it's like everybody just buys the same cars every, like when i when i go to these car meets i'm lucky to see another e36 at these giant meets lucky to see one that's like really nice and done up like as far as an e36 chassis a lot of them were turned to drift cars, so they're all smashed up and beat up. They're not really super clean. Um, they're hard to find now in good condition that aren't rusted out, at least on the East Coast. And it's just something cool to have. Like, I, I don't think I would ever sell this car, to be honest. Like, and, I, and after experiencing, like, the super regret of selling the GLI, like, I don't want to sell the car. Um, because I just feel like I'll miss it so much, like I missed the GLI, and I'm not gonna, the, the, the facts of it is, I'm not gonna find another clean E36 like this, convertible, hard top, it's probably never gonna happen again. It's honestly probably become a once, once in a lifetime thing, because I look and see what's out there as far as these chassis, and if they're not completely rotted out, or smashed up, dented up, or returned into race cars or drift cars, you just don't find them. Everything on my car, that I on the E36 that I own, is all OEM parts for the most part. Everything is there. Everything is worked. Nothing's busted. None of the interior is busted up. Like it's kind of just cool to have. And I know, um, I one like there's like two other kids that have like that I really like to have black hardtop E36s on Instagram. It's like uh, this kid Aiden and this other kid. Uh, his name is Jay Gusty on Instagram. And I talk to both of them once in a while. And like they're similar. They have all like OEM parts, super clean, like just super basic setup. E36s that are just super nice and super dope. And um, it's just something cool to have. I haven't been to any local car meets much lately at all. Like, unless, like, my friends, like, really drag me out to them. Like, and a lot, honestly, a lot of them have stopped going to it. Because it's just so much dumb, reckless that goes on now. Like, I can't tell you how many times I'm hearing about kids getting hit from kids doing donuts. You know, people crashing into people's cars and stuff because they're fucking around doing donuts or or doing burnouts or just they just can't hang out. They always got to be like, hi, I'm the cool guy doing something cool. Like it wasn't like this four or five years ago. People would just get together and just chill and respect these lots that these meets were in. And then the cops come and shut them down. And then, you know, sometimes you get you get completely screwed and you're stuck in there with the cops and then you're going to get a ticket. And it's like it's not even worth it for me to take something like my car to one of these meets to where somebody could possibly hit it because at the end of the day like like i said the chassis and the parts are just getting hard to come by in like clean form and like it's something that like i'm sure a lot of other people with older cars can speak of not just bmws you know even with like nice like my friend nick with the 05 sti like you don't want to get that stuff banged up because the parts are getting more limited to fine as far as oem unless you want you know aftermarket stuff and I don't like aftermarket stuff. It's just cool to have OEM stuff. So it's like you take that stuff for granted because if something gets hit like that and insurance is going to cover it, at the end of the day, it's a 99 BMW. They're going to pay Kelly Blue Book, which is probably two to $3,000 on it. And everything else on that car is just, it's a loss, essentially. And everything everything that fixes is going to come out of your own pocket and you're just, you beat, essentially. And it sucks. So my car just really just sits like it literally sits under a cover i take it out once in a while you know go cruise around down by the beach down by my mom's house in south central south jersey out by like point pleasant and stuff you know i'll take it out to cruise with some friends some days but as far as like meets and stuff in the car scene like i don't even really go to anything anymore i think this was my last year of h2o if anyone knows what h2o it's a huge car event down in ocean city maryland and you you can't even go enjoy that anymore it's just nothing but just reckless kids the police are horrendous down there i literally went down there for four days i pulled my car off the hotel parking lot my car is not even like crazy like illegal with like crazy cam or anything like that like it's pretty it's pretty pretty just a clean straight car and don't run crazy camber it's bagged 
you know you see it's on wed services and stuff like that like it's nothing it, like it looks beautiful in person i'm in love with this car but it's nothing crazy that you would get like impounded or ticketed for down there like if you don't know you go down there cops are pulling over everybody impounding everybody impounding everybody i don't know how i got out of it i got pulled over literally i went out for coffee one morning i'm like let me go for a cruise because it's fun to go cruise that's where you go down there for you cruise the strip i'm down with your boys and stuff and i went out pulled onto the strip drove two lights seen how many cops were out i'm like i'm going back i'm like i'm not gonna get a ticket because impound fees and everything they're like you're spending over 900 dollars in tickets you got to pay an impound fee to get out they're towed in you know you're spending 1500 dollars just to get your once everything's done tickets and impound i wasn't trying to get hit with that prices for no reason so i'm like i'm gonna go back to the hotel i spin around and i get pulled over by a bike cop pulls me over in front of my hotel before i pull into the lot to park again i was just gonna leave the car you know give him my stuff and um Given my stuff, luckily, my dad was a retired cop. I have my gold card. You know, he asked who my dad was and everything, and he literally comes up to me. He pulls me out of the car. He's like, let me talk to you for a sec. I'm like, all right. I get out of the car. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. He's probably going to tell me he's going to pop the car. He goes, I'm only going to give you tickets because I respect that your father served. And I'm like, okay, that's great. Sit down back in the car. He gives me $300 tickets. He follows me to the parking spot, makes me park the car. That was it. I didn't drive the rest of the week until I left. But like, and that's not me trying to say, oh, because my dad's a cop, I didn't get impounded this and that. I'm so fucking fortunate that I didn't get impounded because I should have been impounded. He told me flat out, he's like, if you didn't have this card, you're getting impounded, which is kind of like, it's not fair to people that did get impounded. It is what it is. I'm fortunate that I got out of there with just $300 worth of tickets, but it's my last H2O. I've been going for years. It's the one of the most best weekends of my life every year, but it's not fun to go down there and not be able to drive your car go to these meets down there and, you know, enjoy meeting new people, checking out other people's cars. It's not even enjoyable. Literally, my car sat in the parking lot for four days straight. It wasn't even enjoyable. So easily my last year at each show, and so unfortunate because it was such an amazing event down there. And people are watching this. Um, you know, a lot of my closest friends, we all go. They all can agree for the same, the same reasons. Like, you just can't even go drive cars down there or do anything without getting impounded or just dealing with idiots, just doing dumb stuff, you know, crashing cars tolling their cars doing donuts around you know u-turns and this and that just like stupid stuff and like this is the state of the car scene is in now and it's honestly just gone it's literally going down like the shit, to be honest like i'm just gonna keep the car for a weekend cruiser you know i'll go hang out with people that are actually into cars and actually care and not trying to be cool and you know building the same boring stuff doing the same boring things in my opinion and th this is just my opinion you guys can people who are true car people and think i'm talking shit about their cars i'm not talking about your cars that are not because it's not a bmw or something old that's not what i'm trying to say here i'm trying to say i don't like the car scene and the state it's in right now everybody builds the same stuff everyone does the same stuff there's just nothing cool anymore you know there's very few times you're seeing people you know put sick rare wheels from japan or wheels they built themselves they're buying cheap stuff off of ebay and putting it on thinking it's the sickest thing ever i don't want to go to car shows and see the same stuff like that every day because that's basically what it's been for the last two years and that's basically where i stand as far as the car scene and car culture goes um, I would love to have another car buddy on here with me to film one of these podcasts for sure. And uh, I think I'm going to reach out to somebody soon who would probably be down to do it because he's a cool dude in the car scene. He does some very cool stuff. The kid Aiden I was telling you guys about with the other E36, you know, he does a lot of cool shit. I follow social media. And uh, we both have the same car. Seem like we both have the same interest in what we like doing to these cars and stuff and maybe have the same opinion on, on the car scene. And uh, I think we might dive into it soon. I'm going to reach out and see if he wants to do it. So if you're watching this, I don't know if you watch these. I don't really know you that well, Aiden, but we've talked on Instagram. Beautiful cars you have. We both have good conversations. I think we should do a podcast for sure about the car scene. And, you know, I see you got stuff going on with the sp uh, wheel spinners. He builds these, uh, he calls them the spinner. And uh, basically, he builds all these things from scratch, welds all everything together, puts these rollers on. It makes it easy for building and refurbishing wheels and stuff. Super sick idea. The kid's killing it right now with them. Shout outs to you. I see you're doing amazing with the sales on those things. Keep crushing it with that. And uh, I'd love to have you on here. I'm going to reach out to you on Instagram probably right after this podcast, see if you want to do something. And uh, we'll set it all up. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I think I'm going to wrap it up. I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter. This is about 40 minutes uh, by myself. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Leave some comments below of other things you'd like me to talk about. Reach out if you want to be on the podcast. Like I said in the beginning, please, please, please. I don't care if you're a stranger. I never met you before. Anything. Reach out to me. We'll talk. We'll set a podcast up. Lately, I've been doing these over Discord with somebody recording their face with a webcam or whatever, or it could just be a voice and I record myself. I really don't care. Um, but preferably, if you can set up a Discord call 
use Discord. And if you can't, I will walk you through it. If you're pat, if you really want to be on with me and just have a great conversation, I'll help you guys set everything up that you need to set up, and we'll basically go from there. But uh, guys, until the next one, hopefully another one soon. Uh, this is the end of Vibecast number five, and I uh, can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.